Hey Flosstube, I'm Michelle from Michelle's Romantic Tangle and today we're going to talk about count of cross stitch kits and how to separate that knot of floss that most of us dread when we find it in the kit. It is not as hard as I used to think it was. Back in the days when I first started cross stitching, I gave up kits because I was afraid of separating the floss and getting the colors wrong and making a mess of things. And in the years since then, I have gotten better at it. It is not as hard as I th once thought it was. And I am going to today give you some tips on how this is. Well, it is never going to be a fun task. It is definitely a manageable one. So I am separating the floss for the Busilla Dollhouse Hutch. This is one of my mania starts. There are 23 colors here which I'll show you something interesting. This is Max in the Adirondacks, Adirondacks. The floss for Max, it comes with this lovely pile of floss, but the floss for this one, which looks way more intimidating, is divided into bundles. There is a bundle with green thread, a bundle, there are bundles with yarn. I think this is the bundle with white yarn. And then in the chart itself, it will tell you bundle one with white yarn, there are a dozen colors. Bundle two with green yarn, there are a dozen colors. So actually, as complicated as this mess looks, it is not going to be as hard to separate as the floss for the little dollhouse which only has 23 colors so when you look at this don't panic i have heard so many people say and i was guilty of it myself that you should just throw this all away and buy your own floss so you know you've got the right colors i don't know about you but in my life at this moment in time it is easier for me to come by time than it is cash to buy new floss with and there's really no need to throw away perfectly good floss and start over with DMC. If you want to, go for it, but you absolutely 100% don't have to. And when you think about it, they have been making these kits for years, decades. Stitchers have been separating the floss and finishing these kits for decades. So I think we make a mountain out of a molehill here. And as I said, I'm going to show you how I do it. So this is the Busilla Dollhouse Hutch. This is the bundle of floss that came with it. I went through the chart and I list, took some index cards and made myself some temporary floss organizers. I wrote down the name of each color and the number of strands of each color. And what this is going to do is it's a list of all the colors, so it will show me that I do have all of them sorted. This is kind of like those old logic games where you had to figure out who the killer was because Bob wasn't sitting next to Nancy and Tom had a red hat but didn't eat turkey and the person who ate turkey wasn't sitting by Bob. Did you do those as a kid? So we have 23 colors to find these colors. I have printed out a Busilla to DMC conversion chart and I have also pulled out my DMC color chart. I have the one that has the actual swatches of floss. I've had this for 20 years. I think mine dates 2000 and it's old but that serves my purposes very well because most of the kits I am using this to match up floss for are just as old, if not much older than my chart is. So we are going to start out by pulling the easy colors. I really recommend having something solid and light colored to lay your floss on while you're separating the colors. I recommend doing this in good lighting, although in reality the lighting in my house is not always the best. I have used my flashlight on my phone to see if two shades of green were really the same color or not. So 
So let's get started. Start out by separating the easiest colors. In this case, that should be white and black. And there is one strand of red, which when I looked it up on the conversion chart is 666. I don't even need to compare 666 with my DMC. There is one strand of, I'm going to guess that this is yellow. And I could probably confirm that that is yellow without looking it up on the conversion charts, but just kind of to prove my point, yellow is 726. So 726 is DMC 726. Sometimes the color do match up. I go look at the back of my DMC floss card for 726 is going to be in row 13. I open it up. I flip through to row 13, find 726. Take my yellow floss from the kit. That's probably 726. And a lot of the colors, the white, the black, the cream, I can probably pick out without comparing to the color card, but when it gets to the pale dusty green and medium dusty green, and they have the same number of strands, I really like having something to confirm my guesses. I've pulled out the easy colors, and this is getting more complicated. Let me sort through it, and we'll look at it again in a minute. Getting further along, things start to get a little more complicated. I thought that this was probably dark dusky green. There are four strands, and there are supposed to be four strands of dark dusty green. So I looked it up on my Bucilla to DMC conversion chart, and of course the number for that Bucilla is not on the chart, so I had to hop online and find another one. But it did tell me eventually that it is DMC 501, and I'm reasonably confident that those two match up, so I will add it to my cards. You can see my cards are filling up, and by doing it this way, I can see which colors I still haven't accounted for. So slowly but surely, I'm making progress. This requires a lot of patience. Don't do it when you are in a hurry. And just take your time. Here I have myself thoroughly confused. When I was looking at these and had them lined up together, in the poor lighting, they looked the same color, and I was convinced I had four strands of this, which matches light gold, but there are only supposed to be three strands of light gold. There's one strand of orange, which I could not find anywhere. Here's my strand of orange. The color card and some good lighting helped me to sort that out, otherwise, honestly, I don't know how catastrophic it would have been if I'd had one of these in the wrong spot of the finished piece. Probably not very, but I love that doing it this way with the conversion charts and the color cards really helps my peace of mind a lot. So full disclosure, this is the part of the project where I really want to throw the entire thing across the room. I mean, there's only five or six more colors here. I could totally replace those with DMC and it wouldn't be that catastrophic, right? But I'm going to sort through them. So what I'm doing at this point is I am pulling out strands one at a time and piling them up, putting like with like, and trying to narrow down my choices. It's getting more and more like that logic game as we go. Telling the difference between pale dusky green and light dusty green was about enough to make me throw this entire project across the room. I laid it against a white background, I pulled out my flashlight, and guys, these four are a different shade than those five, I think. Honestly, I am at the point where I do not care. And I have one extra strand of floss which I am pretty dang sure is lime green. I was supposed to have two lengths of that and I appear to have three. It's definitely not one of the pale dusty greens. So we'll, we will just start stitching and hope for the best at this point. And that guys is how I separated my flosses for the Busilla Dollhouse Hutch. It was a process. I should have timed myself, although 
it always takes a lot longer to film something than it does just to do it. It was tedious. It was not pleasant. But I am ready to stitch and I am extremely confident that I have the right names on the right flosses. If this is souring you to the idea of kits, keep in mind this is an old kit. It's from 1994. Newer kits tend to have their floss pre-sorted. If I had to choose between a pre-sorted floss kit or this mess, I would totally choose the pre-sorted floss. But this is an out-of-print kit I got at the thrift shop for $3, so it's worth my time. I'm going to have a lot of fun stitching this. I have seen stitched examples in antique malls. It is gorgeous. And as of today, May 5th, 2020, when I am recording this, Going and buying new floss at the craft store is not an option, so sorting the floss from these old kits is a very practical skill to have. Let me know if you've got any tips that I missed. I hope this helped you if you're going to be sorting floss for a kit of your own. Thanks for watching. I'm Michelle with Michelle's Romantic Tangle, and I will be back with you very soon. I've got a bunch of mania starts I just cannot wait to share.